we've got a u vector of negative 3, 9, 26. I said 26, it's a 6. It's Friday. I'll blame Friday. v is equal to 4, negative 12, negative 8. Oops. Well, let's start by talking about the orthogonal piece. Orthogonal means perpendicular to, and if I have two vectors that are perpendicular, then the angle between them is 90 degrees. So if they're orthogonal, then that angle is going to be 90 degrees, which means cosine of 90 degrees is equal to zero, which means the dot product would have to be zero. And we're actually going to, we're going to use this over and over again. So this is a really good one to just kind of tuck in the back of your head. If you get a dot product of zero, we know those two vectors are orthogonal. That's actually going to be that usually the fastest one for us to check. Now, parallel, if I have two vectors that are parallel, then that should mean that the angle between the vectors is zero. So if I have two vectors that are parallel, and I think about putting them together so that their tips touch, well, if they're parallel, then when I put them together, they're actually running along that same line. They might be different lengths, they might be pointed in opposite directions, but regardless, we're going to be looking at the angle between them is zero. Well, if the angle between two vectors is zero, then I know that cosine of zero is equal to one, which means what we get for the dot product over here, that should be equivalent to what we get when we multiply the magnitudes together. So let's just get started here and take the dot product and see what happens. If I take u dotted with v, again, I'm multiplying component-wise and then adding between them. So I'll have negative 3 times 4 plus 9 times negative 12 plus 6 times negative 8. Um, that's a negative 12. 9 times 12. I'm having a great day here. 108. And 6 times 8 looks like 48. So if I add all of those together, by the way, if anyone thinks I made a mistake in the arithmetic, stop me now so that we make sure that we've got the right answer moving forward. So negative 12 and negative 48, that should be a negative 60. So if that negative 168, well, that's definitely not 0. So they're not orthogonal. To figure out if they're parallel, I now need to look at the magnitudes of our vectors. So the magnitude of u is going to come down to the square root of negative 3 squared plus 9 squared plus 6 squared. And while I'm sure I could do that by hand, I'm not going to. I'm going to take 9 plus 81 plus 36 and say that is the square root of 126. Now let's look at the magnitude of v. So our magnitude of v, I'd end up with the square root of 4 squared plus negative 12 squared plus negative 8 squared. So 4 squared, that's 16. 12 squared is 144. 8 squared is 64. So I've got a square root of 224. So if I multiply these two together, the square root of 120, oops, already making mistakes here. So if I multiply those two together, then 
the square root of 126 times the square root of 224. you get 168. Because these two numbers match, I know that if I plug them into this equation down here, we just saw that negative 168 is equal to 168 times cosine of the angle between them. Well, this tells me that cosine of theta has to be equal to negative one which means if, we're, if cosine is negative one, that I'm at 180 degrees. So these two vectors are pointing in opposite directions, but they're still parallel. So this one is indeed parallel. Um, let's look at another one on here, just because I think it's, it's great practice with magnitudes and with dot products. So that next one, um, I'll erase all of this part. The next one we're given, our u is one, negative one, two, and our v is two, negative one, one. So let's start with our dot product. Oh, where's that? Okay. Now, let's start with our dot product. I'm taking my first components here, so one times two, adding that to multiplication of my second components, negative one times negative one, plus multiplication of my last components, two times one. So I've got two plus another two, so I'm at four, plus another one, I'm at five. We already know that it's not orthogonal. It still could be parallel, and to figure that out, we need to come in and look at what's happening with our magnitudes. So for you, my magnitude would be one squared plus negative one squared plus two squared. So that's one plus one plus four. So that's a square root of six. I come in to take my magnitude of V. That's two squared plus negative one squared plus one squared. So that's also a magnitude of six. If I multiply these two together, square root of six times the square root of six is equal to six. These two don't match, which means they're not orthogonal, they're not parallel, they are neither. If we plug these into our equation down here, we'd end up with five is equal to six cosine theta. So inverse cosine of five sixths, that would be the angle between them but it's definitely not an angle between them of zero or 90 degrees. The last part of 22a, we do this more generically without having numbers. Now, if I were guessing, we already found one that was parallel and one that was neither. My guess is these will be orthogonal. Because that's what I would do if I were writing a question. So A, B, C, negative B, A, zero. So when I take the dot product, multiplying my first components together, I've got A times negative B. Multiplying my second components together, I've got B times A. And multiplying my last components together, I have C times zero. And it looks like my hunch was right. I've got negative AB, positive AB plus zero. So overall, this works out to be zero, which means these are orthogonal. And I don't even have to do the rest of it. 